Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So uh, back to work on the uh, foundry furnace, and uh, I think we're about ready uh, to start pouring uh, the forms that will basically form the chamber that the crucible will lay down inside of this. So before we get into that, though, we do want to talk about a couple of things that we did off camera. Uh, getting prepared for this. So, you know, we've already, you can go back and look at my older videos to see kind of how we built up to this point. Um, but one of the things I was concerned about was casting, you know, this whole top part on top of this bottom piece and it possibly sliding around. So I actually came in here with a concrete cutting uh, diamond uh, blade on, a, on an angle grinder and uh, we went outside and uh, basically I, I cut a kind of a V-shaped groove, circular groove, right down the bottom of this. And this is basically in the, in the area that the uh, three inch wide uh, upright wall will drop down on top of. And my, my thinking on this is, is that that right there will kind of give a key for this uh, bottom to fit down into. Gravity will be pulling it down and you'll have kind of that little V in there to hold it in place so that uh, if the furnace gets bumped one way or the other, that top part won't slide. It'll be locked down into this piece. Uh, I'm also gonna take it and wet this whole area real well, get a sponge or something and, and uh, soak in some water on this before we do the pour. And that should also help, now that we kinda got this glaze off, we got a rough area in here, that should help the uh, refractory from the top kinda bind to the bottom. And you know, I don't think it'll be a perfect one piece like it was a single pour, uh, but it, we should get some extra grip by uh, uh, wetting that down. Very similar to, you know, how mortar sticks to a brick. So uh, that's kind of the idea here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, start building the forms up and get this ready to pour. Before we do that though, there is one other thing I want to mention that we did. Uh, I took and uh, using a, a concrete bit, I drilled a hole all the way through the very center of the bottom of this uh, furnace. Uh, about a 5 8 inch diameter hole. And uh, the idea here is that this is a drain hole. Should a crucible ever bust inside the furnace uh, while we're, we're charging it, we have molten metal uh, come out the, uh, you know, to, to spill in the furnace, we don't want to have all that down the bottom of the furnace. So this right here will basically provide a drain uh, that will allow that metal to come out the bottom. This is a pretty common feature on uh, some furnaces, not on all. Uh, but after uh, looking into things, uh, looking at some other commercial furnaces, and I'm kind of basing this off, as well as uh, some of the comments that I got from you guys, I decided to, to go ahead and put that in there. Uh, remember in use that there will be a kind of a block right here in the center of Pilf uh, that will that the, the uh, crucible will sit up on, and that will cover the hole. So under normal operations, it will be covered up. But if something were to uh, bust in here, you know, we could move that out of the way and uh, drain the, the metal out of the bottom of the furnace and you wouldn't have a big mess. So that's the idea there. So now let's go ahead and get started uh, building up the forms. So we're gonna start by putting in, positioning uh, the center uh, form tube here. And again, a couple of things I wanna show you that we've done to this uh, to get it ready. First off, I took some spray paint. I just had some, a can of gray spray paint sitting out here in the shop and I sprayed the outside of this tube. Uh, you know, the inside of this has kind of got a, a, a wax type finish on it. The outside is just cardboard and I was afraid that the water may absorb into this too fast. So uh, the idea here is uh, by putting the paint on there that hopefully it will kind of seal it a little bit and uh, maybe help prevent moisture from going into it as quickly. Uh, the other thing I did was I've got that block of wood in the bottom to kind of position it. And I've drilled a 5 8 inch hole in the very center. And I'm gonna just drop a 5 8 inch bolt down through there. And that right there will position uh, this exactly uh, in the middle where I want it. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. My arms are not long enough. It's probably plenty. There we go. So that has got this uh, positioned, and that should give us some stability while we're uh, while we're doing the, uh, the ramming this up to keep this uh, form from uh, moving around on me. 
Next, we're going to come in uh, with the uh, the outer form, and it just drops down over this. And uh, on this one, I'll line it up on the bottom, uh, kind of squaring it up with the the base itself to kind of get it centered up. We put this together so that this uh, bottom piece of plywood would more or less match the base and that is what we're going to use to line it up with. And that is probably good enough. I've taken some clamps and just clamped the, uh, the uh, plywood part of this down to the base uh, to kind of give it some extra stability, make sure it's not going to move around on me. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, this will be the uh, where the true iron goes through or the hole that will go through this. And um, I'm going to have to take a little bit of time and get this kind of positioned just right. And uh, then we're going to seal that up with some silicone just to make sure it doesn't leak around it. So we're just about ready to start mixing up the refractory and uh, getting it packed in here. But before I do that, again, just a couple little uh, little things we did kind of off camera getting ready for this. So uh, I wasn't real happy with how the st stable the center tube was, and I decided we needed to do something about it. So um, I, I took actually a couple ideas from uh, comments that came in on the channel on how to do this. So first thing you'll notice is around the outside I've got a couple of these little spacers. I just got three spacers. It's just a little wooden block uh, that's made to fit down in this groove. And that will stabilize the top of this tube and kind of keep it from moving around. As I'm packing it, if I need to pick it up and move it, I can pick them up and move them. They're not in the way. And then once we get to the top, we'll just take them out all together because uh, the concrete will more or less, or the refractory will more or less be doing that job by the time we get up there. Also, even though we had that piece of wood in the bottom and had the, the dowel or the pin going down through the, the, the hole, it still just wasn't quite as stable as I wanted. So I, what I actually did was I took a, a bag of uh, kitty play sand, just some fine sand, and uh, we probably filled up the first, I don't know, seven, eight inches of the tube uh, with play sand. And uh, the weight from that, plus the pressure pushing out on that will kind of also counteract counter, uh, the pressure coming in from the refractory down there in the bottom where the most pressure is gonna be. And that will also help just stabilize this and hold it in place. So I'm happy uh, with how we've got this set up. I think we're ready to go ahead and start mixing up the refractory and uh, putting it in there. Uh, I did some calculations uh, based on the volume of uh, my two cylinders, so I did the volume of the outside cylinder, then I calculated the volume of the inside cylinder, subtracted them, plus the, the volume of the, the ring that goes around here, and I was basically able to estimate about how many bags of refractory I needed. And if I did my math right, and then if the numbers they gave me on the density of the product uh, per cubic foot is accurate, uh, I should need about five and a half bags of refractory. So I'm probably going to go ahead and mix up five bags or, or I may, I, anyway, we're going to probably start just a little bit short of that and I can quickly mix up another bag to finish it up uh, once I kind of can gauge about how much is going to be needed to finish it out. So we're ready to go. Let's start mixing some refractory. So slight change in the um, way we're going to do the mixing this time. As you see, I've got a cement mixer here and I think we're going to try to mixing it up in the mixer this time rather than doing it uh, the way I did last time. Uh, this is the recommended way of doing it and uh, I did a little inquiring and found out that uh, the museum where I volunteer, the Georgia Museum of Agriculture, has this uh, mixer. Uh, I, it kind of looks like it might ought to need to be an artifact at the museum, <laughs> but uh, they actually still use this and uh, uh, promised me that it would work, so uh, we're going to give this a try uh, mixing this up. So uh, let's get this thing fired up and uh, we'll start mixing. So I've already put the water in and uh, we're going to go ahead and start mixing some bags up in this.
So I ended up mixing up two bags to start with, and as soon as I transferred these two bags over to my plastic tub to bring in here and start working with, I've got the other two more bags mixing up right now, so this can go pretty much as a constant pour. It'll be a, you know, a minute or two, a couple minutes between uh, batches, uh, but we should be able to move pretty quickly. Uh, this looks a lot better consistency uh, than that first stuff we did. I think just the added mixing is helping. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, go to putting this stuff in. And I've got my ramrod here that I can pack this with. And I'm paying particular attention around this uh, pipe that goes through this side to make sure I've got it packed completely up underneath that. All right, batch two. I'm just going to kind of turn the top of this, make sure that it's ready to mix with the next layer. And I uh, will start shoveling in some more. All right, let's go mix up the next batch. All right, hopefully this will be the uh, last uh, batch. I've got the uh, top ring on here. And uh, you might notice I've welded some uh, metal around the inside that's just kind of give it some, something to kind of grab a hold of that concrete to keep it from sliding up and down. So this is actually just some key stock that I've bent and uh, welded in there. And as luck would have it, I'm not quite up to the top, so I'm going to have to mix up one more bag. And I probably only need about half of a bag, but that'll be all right.
<laughs> well, if you're looking at this and wondering what happened, uh, we're back to square one. Uh, we had a complete failure. So uh, after we got it all kind of looking really good, I came back out here a few minutes and looked into the tube and the center tube uh, was just starting to collapse. I was off camera at this point in time and I was quite honestly in a bit of a rush trying to salvage the situation by putting some uh, forms down inside that tube to push it back out. Uh, but it became apparent very quickly that the cardboard was just becoming saturated and it was just collapsing under the weight. So um, I had to make a decision on what to do and I decided that I really didn't want to have a uh, solid mess of a refractory that had collapsed on itself. So I started emptying out the forms and um, it was quite a job. And, uh, but we got it all out. Uh, the worst part is, is I basically just had to go dump all that refractory. Uh, you know, it's, it's a loss. Several hundred dollars worth of uh, refractory uh, basically gone. And so what's the game plan now? Well, obviously I'm gonna have to get a more stable center tube. And uh, that's not a problem. I really thought that the, the tubes there would, would work, but you know, they're made to put concrete on the inside and you've got the you know the strength of the tube holding it together but when the weights on the outside pushing in evidently it just wasn't uh, strong enough to be able to handle that uh, even with the sand inside it just was it was just collapsing uh, so anyway uh, we will uh, persevere and we will come up with a plan B uh, this project may get put on the back burner for a little bit uh, until I kind of come up with a game plan. I'm going to have to uh, obviously get some more uh, refractory, which is uh, going to take me a little bit of time. Uh, I'm probably not going to be back over in that area, uh, Birmingham area, for a little while to get that. Uh, but no fears. Uh, we will be successful. We're just going to have to approach this from a little bit different standpoint. And... Uh, disappointed but uh, lesson learned so uh, I guess uh, that'll wrap up this episode and uh, we'll be back on the furnace uh, in the near future at least we were able to salvage the base uh, the outer form uh, is fine obviously the inner form uh, is toast and we'll have to come up with something else there so thanks for watching <laughs>